Men, I look at the young people in this country and I look at where the country is. The one question that really bothers me is where will South Africa be in 10 years? Where will this country be in 10 years time? If today in South Africa we are faced with 60% of young people sitting at home doing nothing, that is millions and millions of people sitting at home cannot do anything. Most of these young people, they have certificates, they have qualifications, but they can't find jobs because there are no jobs in South Africa. Most of them, they can't even migrate because they don't have money. So they are here, they are stuck in South Africa. They are stuck with no options and now they are dead coming from the higher institutions they learn from. Most of these young people today in South Africa, man, they will tell you that I owe a certain university 200,000, I owe a certain college 50,000 rand. And they can't even find jobs so that they can get rid of this debt and this debt is not going anywhere. So where will South Africa be in 10 years time? We can't even look at politicians to solve the problems of young people in this country. Man, I don't know what is wrong with young people in this country. I don't know what makes young people think in this country politicians are going to solve our problems. We see these people each and every day in parliament. The space, the one space where different political parties meet, the one space where these people are supposed to propose legislations, debate the issues that are actually affecting day-to-day -day South Africans. But no, politicians, they get to parliament and they turn that space into a mockery. So now we have a situation where the country is not moving forward. Young people are not going forward in this country. General public is not going forward in this country. Why? Because the country is still governed by the political system. So what is exactly going to happen to South Africa in 10 years' time? Are we still going to look at political system to fix what the political system broke? Where will South Africa be in 10 years' time? And I look at young people, man. You look at the stuff that young people are occupied with. You look at social media. You look at the stuff that is trending each and every day. These are the topics that young people are interested in in South Africa. You go on social media and you watch that. And you look at what young people are interested in. And you can see that most of the things that young people are interested in are things that are not going to help this country move forward. So right now, I feel like young people have also given up on the country because even with the elections, young people do not go out to vote. They don't want to participate in anything that has to do with the politics. You'll hear young people tell you that, man, I don't want anything that has to do with the politics. Man, politics, yeah, I, 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 I don't want to hear anything about politics. As much as you don't want to hear anything about politics, politics want to hear everything about you. This is one thing that young people are not getting in the, into, the, into their heads. That as much as they don't want anything to do with politics, politics want everything to do with them. On your screen right now, the man that you are seeing is Colin Malachi, the ANC Youth League president. Man, you have to understand that the ANC resurrected the youth league branch with this guy by electing this guy as the president so i feel like this guy was actually given a golden chance to actually have an impact on young people's lives in south africa you know this person was elected to be the anc youth league president after eight years so this is the first anc youth league president after julius malema so this guy was actually given a golden opportunity to actually have an impact on young people's lives so the african national congress elected this guy on his first press conference, man, you know, this is why guys, I always tell you that identity politics, man, will be the death of this country. Identity politics and racial politics will be the death of this country. If there's one thing that is going to kill this country, it's identity politics because policy is ignored. All the problems that are facing people today, they are ignored. This is exactly what happened with Colin Malachi on his first day, on his first press conference. He was asked about Julius Malem. And instead of telling the journalist that, man, this is my first day, this is my first press, press conference as the ANC Youth League president, I am not going to address Julius Malema. Young people in this country, they have problems. Young people are faced with a lot of challenges. So I don't have time to address Julius Malema. I am going to address Julius Malema maybe someday. But today, young people are faced with a lot of challenges. So I am going to address the issues that are only affecting young people in this country. Colin Malachi didn't do that. Instead, he addressed the whole issue of Julius Malema. So his first press conference was all about what he said about Julius Malema. It was no longer about the policies and what the African National Congress Youth League wanted to do for young people. So the question comes, guys, where will South Africa be in 10 years' time? The state of the youth and the country, South African state of the youth is that disheartening and demoralizing. When situations are getting worsened, 
there's little room for hope. And the fact that there's little room for hope, man, like, as a young, piece, as a young person in this country, man, I look at young people and I'm like, guys, at some point we have to take accountability, man. Most of the things that are happening today, we are enabling these things to happen. We are not taking charge of our country, man. You remember, they, like, back in the days, man, you know when you read about apartheid, when you read about the struggle, and when you read about the fact that young people were actually the ones in front fighting the apartheid government. You think, you think about that, man. You think about how young people, how patriotic young people were in apartheid in South Africa, man. Young people from all races, they were patriotic in South Africa. But you look at young people today and you're like, what is wrong with young people today? Because young people back then, they were not sitting back, they were not sitting on their hands and allowing the people in government to do what they want and allowing the people to turn their lives outside down, upside down. Young people back then, young people in the struggle, man, they were, they were the ones in front. They were the ones fighting about it. Like this is why when you read his, when you when you read history, man, you will find out that most of the marches, most of the significant marches in this country were headed by young people. But today, Today, we are at the far worst position. But young people in this country, man, they are just sitting back. They are just enjoying their lives, having drinks with their families, having drinks with their friends, getting into drugs, and not participating in anything that is actually progressive in this country. So when will young people in this country actually take blame? Because when you read about what young people did, man, back in the days, man, you read about all of these struggles. You know, these struggle style words, when you read about them, what they did back then, you would say that, man, these people were brave. As much as this was something that was done by all young people in this country, because, you know, man, the media has always played a role of actually making people believe that the struggle stalwarts are the only ones who fought apart it, but we know that the general public actually fought apart it. But when you read about all of this stuff, you can see that young people in this country back then were not sitting on their hands. They were not sitting back and allowing the government to actually turn their lives upside down. You look at young people today, man, we are, we, it's day and night. Young people in this country today and young people in, in, in this country back in the days, man, it's day and night. So my question is, again, man, when will young people actually take, when, when will they take responsibility for what is actually happening in the country today? And the hope that should be driven by the youth of this country. High level of crime, unemployment, substance abuse, poverty, minimum access to higher education. The inspiration of the of South African youth to engage in entrepreneurial opportunities must be supported. We call upon the president of the country. We demand that we expand the public procurement bill aiming to enforce the transformation of the youth through the involvement of small businesses. Because any big economy in the world are mainly driven by small businesses. But again, that's the thing with ANC Youth League, man. You guys always call on the president to do this. You always call on the president to do that, man. Last time, you were calling on the president and saying that, man, the African National Congress, man, all of those crannies, 50% of those crannies in parliament must move out so that young people can move in in parliament. You said that young people in this country must, must head 50% of the governmental positions. You always call for things. This is what I'm trying to tell you. You always call for things to the African National Congress, but we hardly see any phones of all of these things that you always call for. So when are you actually going to do something instead of always calling for something? You always call for the ANC to do this. I call for the ANC to oh, to close the borders. I call for the ANC to to, to to have young people to have young people representing them in parliament. I call for the ANC to have young people re representing them in government. I call you always call for things. When is actually ANC Youth League going to stand up and actually stand for something? When are you guys actually going to take action? Because going on these stages and calling for something, it, it, it is nothing. You are doing nothing for the young people of this country. When are you actually going to take action? When are you actually going to do something tangible? Come on, man. We've reached an extent whereby we've decentralized, we've decentralized to a point where even a small thing, like basic items are manufactured outside the country, like countries like China, including a small thing like an underwear, you get it manufactured <laughs> outside the country. We're saying as the ANC Youth League that we're re-emphasizing our position on the industrialization as an important tool 
for job creation as an important tool to open for the youth of this country to full participate in their own economic activities of their own country. The Youth Employment Program. Implement a large scale and target the Youth Employment Program to provide meaningful work opportunities, skills development and mentorship. We call upon also the private sector to not sit back and watch. We're saying the private sector must play a very crucial role in the creation of employment for the youth and business opportunities. Man, how can the private sector <laughs> create employment when you guys are failing to create a conducive environment? You want the private sector to create, to create employment. Where, where do you want these people to invest? Because that is the problem with you guys there at African National Congress. I mean, you have broken things so much that investors don't even want to invest into South Africa. So when, what is it exactly that the African National Congress Youth League is going to do to persuade the investors to come into South Africa and invest so that businesses can open, so that young people can, can, can thrive? You can't simply call for the investors to invest into South Africa. What is African National Congress going to do so that the investors can come into South Africa? That is the question that you should ask the African National Congress. Before you even think about asking the investors to come and invest into South Africa, you must ask what is it exactly that the African National Congress is going to do so that those investors can come into South Africa. Many investors are leaving South Africa. Load sharing man, is causing people jobs. Investors are leaving the country. You can't even fix load sharing. You can't even give people electricity so that their businesses can run. So how do you expect these people to come into the country and invest into the country when you can't even manage your, your, your energy? What is African National Congress going to do so that the investors can come into South Africa? Because I think that whole rhetoric of yours that we can be like China, we can do everything like China, is starting to catch up with you. You're starting to see that in South Africa we don't have skills. You're starting to see that South Africans are miseducated. You're starting to see that our education system is a sham. You're starting to see that young people in this country, they are not making any technological advances. This is why now, today, you are asking for investors to come into South Africa. This whole rhetoric of yours, we can be like China with 30%, is starting to catch up with you. You are starting to wake up and realize that, man, in South Africa, man, the young people in this country, they will never compete with the young people all over the world, man. With 30%, as long as we have Njimu Tsega, we have Bladen Zeman, man, running the education systems, running the ed ed education institutions, young people in this country, they will never prosper. I think that is starting to catch up with you. So before you ask the investors to come into South Africa, tell the African National Congress to create a conducive environment, clamp down on these borders, man, clamp down on crime, make sure that South Africans are getting the service and delivery that they want so that the investors can come into the country. Man, there is so much that the African National Congress needs to do before the investors come. Man, even if I was an investor myself, I wouldn't invest into South Africa because what is there to invest in? What is there to invest in, man? Because half of the day, you don't have electricity. Now you have to buy generators, and these generators are operated with petrol. Now you have petrol and diesel for these generators, and these generators themselves are expensive. So how do you expect businesses to actually thrive in South Africa when you guys cannot even solve the issue of load shedding? Come on, man. Because we've seen that a lot of private companies utilize illegal foreigners to exploit them in the middle of a high level of unemployment of the youth. We're saying that the Department of Labor, Department of Employment, must be able to set up clear systems to make sure that all employment opportunities are given to the youth of the country. We are aware that a lot of companies in South Africa, a job that was supposed to be done by one, by one, by ten people, is done by one person. <laughs> Again, you can't blame the companies for hiring foreign nationals when you guys are not clamping down on the borders. This is why I'm saying, man, the African National Congress needs to do an introspection. You can come and propose all of these solutions when you guys haven't done any introspection. The African National Congress hasn't dealt with the issue of the borders. The borders are porous, man. People are doing as they please. You know, South Africa, in South Africa, people are coming in, they're going out as they please. That is happening under the African National Congress. It is happening under you guys. So businesses are businesses. At the end of the day, these people, men, are chasing the profit. 
they don't care about actually improving the lives of South Africa. What the businesses want is pro it's, 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 it's profit. They know these people who come outside of South Africa are going to work for half the salaries of South Africans. But that is enabled by you guys by not clamping down on the borders, by not making sure that people who are in the country man, are people who are legal to be in the country, people who have the documents to be in the country, people who can actually contribute into South Africa. That is your problem. The fact that companies now are hiring more people who come outside of South Africa to work for half the salaries of South Africans, man, it is the problems that are created by the African National Congress by refusing to deal with the issue of borders. Now the issue of borders is coming to bite you. Those are part of the programs that we believe that the Department of Labor must wake up and force and discipline the private sector. Because for a long time, we have not been able to discipline the private sector to play an important role in this country because that appears beneficiaries of economic activities of this country. We are calling upon the Department of Higher Education to play a crucial role in the reskilling of the youth so that the skills reflect the economic activities of this country. We can have a lot of young people roaming around the streets when there's a lot of budget in the cities in all corners being taken back to treasury when the youth of this country are running around the streets doing nothing, getting involved in crime. When the government of today have set aside a budget, we're saying that those departments which are not spending their budget on new development, we're calling upon the president to urgently act on them. Enough is enough. We can what are those departments doing with that money? What have they done with that money? <laughs> if we have departments that have money that, that they are supposed to spend on youth programs, what is it exactly they are doing with that money? We can have departments or people responsible for those departments sitting at home while the majority of the youth of this country are suffering when there's a budget for them to resolve their problems. On NEFSAS. <laughs> we are very clear as the Youth League that we are fighting for a free compulsory universal education. But that free compulsory education, someone has to pay for it. These are, these are the rhetorics, man, that are actually misleading the people in the country. Nothing is for free in this world. You can call for free education, but someone has to pay for that free education. So who is going to pay for all of these free things that you guys are calling for? Who is going to fund all of these programs that you guys are coming with? Because you're calling for free education, you're calling for free housing, you're calling for free... But someone has to pay for it. At the end of the day, someone has to pay for it. So who is going to pay for it? And I think... Like right now, man, in 2023, man, we need to stop telling people that there are th free things in South Africa, man. There are not free things in South Africa. Nothing is for free in this country. Nothing is for free in this country. Someone is paying for it. Whether you think that you got it for free, someone did pay for it. So this free universal education that you are calling for, who is going to pay for it? And we're saying... The ANC clique rejects the NEFSA's budget cuts. We urge the National Treasury to reprioritize the budget cuts away from health and education. The first problem, the first biggest problem that we have is a corrupt CEO. <laughs> or must I say the suspended useless CEO. A two who introduced systems that later affected the students. We're saying that in the middle of a crisis that we're in, we can't have a progressive government that is biased to the poor of the working class, who do budget cuts in areas like NEFSAS. Because majority of black South Africans benefit from the NEFSAS system. Now, when you do a budget cut on NEFSAS, you are simply saying that the kids of the poor of the poorest 
must not have access to education. And as the ANC would click was saying, Treasury must urgently increase, not even cut, must increase the budget of NEFSAS to benefit the majority of South Africans. Where will the Treasury get the money, man? Where will Treasury get that money? You want them to print it out or what? Where will Treasury get money for all of these free things that these people are calling for? And guys, I think, man, at some day, man, I think we should gather and discuss this whole thing of taxpayers paying for people's education. Because I have my own thoughts on people paying this whole thing. For, I have my own thoughts on taxpayers, man, being required to, to pay for some of these programs like NSFAS. Someday we must really make a day and discuss these issues. Because now, I know the NC Youth League, you, want, you don't want the budget cuts, but where will the money come from? Where will the money come from, man? Because, man, these things are going to catch up with you. All of these things that you are giving the people, man, are going to catch up with you. Hopefully that you can do them up until the elections. But I can say that they are going to catch up with you. Some of these programs that have been... The only purpose of them it was to give people free things, free money, free this, free this. At some day, it is going to catch up with you. It is going to catch up with you. People are not working in this country. So the government cannot collect as much tax as they used to back in the days. People, a lot of people are not working in the country today. While we are still fighting for a free compulsory education to be implemented, NEFSAS becomes an intervention to the poor of the poorest in South Africa. And we're saying the corruption at NEFSAS is an enemy of the people of South Africa. You can steal from people who have nothing already. Now, <laughs> it's almost as if he's describing the African National Congress, man. You can not steal from the people who have nothing already. I feel like someone is addressing the African National Congress. When you steal money from NEFSAS, when we are told that the bogus accounts of students, of people who are claiming to be students receiving money from NEFSAS, and there is no clear acting arrest on it, then it's a problem. We are saying those who are seen or found wanting must be immediately be arrested and moved away from NEFSAS. <laughs> <laughs> man, you know these things that you talk about will never happen, man. You know. And they will never happen. You remember that day when I released that video when I said that, man, South Africans need to shut up about wanting accountability for, to, to the banks after that scandal blew out that the banks were manipulating the rent. South Africans were all over the place saying that they want accountability, they want accountability, they want accountability. And I came and said, man, what kind of accountability do you people want? You have watched the African National Congress destroy your country in front of your eyes. For 30 years, you have been watching the African National Congress destroy your state institutions. You have been watching companies leave South Africans. You have been watching people losing their jobs. You haven't said nothing. But now you have heard that the, the, the banks have manipulated the rent. You come out swinging and say that, no, the, the banks must be held accountable. So, man, what kind of accountability do you people want? You have never witnessed any accountability. That was my message to South Africans, that you guys are making noise about banks and accountability. There is no accountability, man. This is today. People have already forgotten that the banks have manipulated the rent. This is exactly what I was talking about, that there is no accountability. People need to stop wasting the time talking about accountability. There is no accountability. Now, Colin Malachi is calling for accountability. What kind of accountability do you people want? <laughs> you have never witnessed any accountability. South Africans have never witnessed any accountability. We are in no position to want accountability for anything wrong that is happening in our country. We have never witnessed any accountability. Even this democracy that we are, we are talking about, we have never actually experienced this democracy. Because we have never voted for other party than the African National Congress. We have never seen something like, you know, in the United States, the people are voting for the Democrats. If they are not happy with the Democrats, they will vote for the, for, for, for the Republicans. And now people the independents are coming up there in the united states you have people that are, are going to run as independents in 2024 they know democracy there they know that if these people are not working for me i'm going to elect other people but this is not the case in south africa even the same democracy that we are talking about we have never actually experienced it because the people of this country for some reason have decided to stick with african national congress through thick and thin 
So there's no accountability, man, in South Africa, man. So you guys going out there and making these statements, calling for accountability, man, calling for the African National Congress to have youth representation, to have a youth representation in Parliament, calling for free education, for calling for treasury, calling for, for, for ca calling for, for, man, you always call for things, but nothing ever happens. Nothing happens. Was saying the Minister of Higher Education must stop sleeping on duty. <laughs> we don't want excuses when it comes to people who steal <laughs> from the youth of South Africa. I was saying if the Minister does not urgently remove those involved in the corruption in NEFSAS, we are calling upon him to be removed because it's clear that if he can't remove them, it means he's involved in the corruption. <laughs> <laughs> On UIF. <laughs> the UIF, through its labor activation program. Has Man, I feel like Colin Malaji will make a good ANC Secretary General after Fikilim Balula. Man, you know the bar there at the ANC especially for the Secretary General, I mean, has hit the ground. I think after Fikile Mbalula, man, the best person to be the Secretary General of the African National Congress, it has to be Colin Malaji, man. It has to be. <laughs> it has to be. Has approved 20, 25 projects committed to jobs, enterprise development opportunities that can employ over 69,000 youth in South Africa. The program committed to approve a project of 2.2 billion of the available 2.8 billion. This program will train young people to instill solar panels, business development support, enterprise development, agri-processing, tourism and hospitality, empower Tibet college graduate placements, now, it's a program that we're saying must be implemented. And we're calling upon the treasury again. You know this treasury, national treasury, I'm starting to believe that it's working with those that want to take the ANC out of power. <laughs> Everything that the national treasury does is anti-South Africans. <laughs> I don't know who they represent this treasury because even when it comes to this clear program that was pronouncement on by the president everyone else, there is a lack of funding and implementation from that level. <laughs> We're saying Treasury must urgently fund these programs as an intervention on the crisis that we are facing as a country of high unemployment of the youth. Or what? The youth can continue to be unemployed when there's a budget set aside for them to resolve their own problems. Now, what's saying that... But that is the thing, man. That is the thing. Money will not solve the problems of South Africa. I mean, so South Africa has problems that do not require money. Money will not solve the problems of South Africa. I mean, you can throw as much money as you want. You will not solve the fundamental problems of this country. So before you deal with the fundamental problems of this country, you can, man, Treasury can print out as much money as they want. They will not make any difference. This is what I'm saying. This, and this is how I feel. Guys, please tell me what you think on the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.